Hi, I'm Tom Nahomi, and I'm a technology evangelist here at Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I'm going to show you how to create read-write many volumes on Tanzu Kubernetes grid clusters and volume snapshots using Dell EMC Parscale and VMware vSphere with Tanzu. In Kubernetes, read-write many volumes are volumes that can be mounted in a read-write fashion simultaneously into a number of pods. This is particularly useful for web and application servers that serve the same files, but also for CI systems like Jenkins, which can be used a share volume for artifact storage rather than unnecessarily duplicating data and impacting CI performance. Using the CNS driver, the built-in VMware CSI driver for VSU with Tanzu, it is not possible to create read-write many volumes on VMFS, VVOLs, or NFS data stores. This capability can be achieved by using the external Parscale CSI driver and creating the persistent volumes directly on Parscale. This functionality is also supported with Parstore and Unity storage arrays. For the purpose of this demo, I deployed a vCenter 7 update tree server and configured vSphere with Tenzu on a 4 node ESXi cluster. In addition, I created a Tanzu guest cluster called Tomer TKG with three master and three worker nodes. We can get more information about that namespace by navigating to the workload management pane and select the namespace name. Now, let's switch to the console and connect to the Tanzu Kubernetes guest cluster using the kubectl command line and authenticating with the VMware vSphere credentials. Kubectl get nodes command shows my virtual Tanzu master and worker nodes. These nodes are presented in the vSphere client as well. As you can see, I installed the Parscale CSI driver on this cluster. This can be done via the Dell EMC CSM installer or via Helm. Kubectl get sc command shows us my storage classes. In addition to the default Tanzu storage class, we have the Parscale storage class we are going to use in this demo. Now, let's create a new 10 gig read write many volume from the Parscale storage class. By navigating to Parscale 1FS and clicking on the File System Explorer, we can see that a new persistent volume has been created successfully. For the purpose of this demo, I'm deploying two Nginx pods. As you can see, I specified the same claim name under the PVC section. Within a few seconds, both pods are up and running and connected to the same Parscale read write many volume. Now, let's connect to pod 1 and create an HTML file. Then, write some data to it and curl the pod. Now, let's connect to pod number 2 and run the curl command to confirm we can read the data that was written by pod 1. Now, let's write more data to the file and then exit. At this stage, let's connect to pod 1 again and run the curl command. This process demonstrates how we can read and write data simultaneously from multiple Kubernetes pods using the Parscale CSI driver. Another very useful CSI feature is the volume snapshots, the ability to create and manage snapshots of existing persistent volume. This feature is not supported yet by the CNS driver, the built-in VMware CSI driver, so we will use the Parscale CSI driver to show you how we can leverage the native Parscale snapshots mechanism for vSphere with Tanzu workloads. kubectl get volume snapshot class command shows us the volume snapshot classes that are available in my cluster. The CSI external snapshotter sidecar pod watches the Kubernetes API server for volume snapshot content and it is mandatory for CSI snapshot functionality. Now, let's create a new volume snapshot. As you can see, I set the source of the volume to the volume that we just created. By navigating to Parscale 1FS and clicking on the Snapshot IQ icon, we can see that a new snapshot has been created successfully. Next, 
let's create a new persistent volume claim from that snapshot. As you can see, I set the data source to the snapshot I've just created and specified the same access mode and volume size. Before creating the new pods, let's first delete the previous ones. In this YAML file, I changed the claim name to the new PVC that I've just created from the snapshot of the original volume. And within a few seconds, the new pods are up and running, connected to the new read-write many volume that has been created from the snapshot. I can connect to pod number one and run the curl command to confirm we can read the data that was previously written by the original pod to the original persistent volume. I can also write new data to the volume that I've just created from the snapshot. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.